about? I feel like I just saw you. I know, I know. We had... Why Why did I feel like I just saw you? We had, a, we had an awesome weekend. Awesome weekend. Where were we? I can hear you all asking that. We were at Contagion Con. Not, not the first. This isn't the first Contagion Con. Contagion Con 4. The fourth. We did this. We started it. It's a little con that we like to do. Yeah. Uh, it's just a very informal thing down here in Florida. And it's something we decided when we, uh, during the contagion. We were like, <laughs> during the contagion. Uh, <laughs> during COVID. Uh, not to, not to go back to it. The pandemic. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, we wanted a place to game. Uh, game store shut down. Different things happening all over. Couldn't go places. Mostly gaming through Zooms and other mediums. and. Mm -hmm. You know, we said, well, let's mask up. Let's get tons of hand sanitizer and see if we can do an in-person gaming. Yeah. But, like, the best way possible. Like, I mean, it was Contagion Con. It was. And then as the pandemic kind of started waning and hitting different waves and things like that, we did Contagion Con 2, the second wave. Contagion mm -hmm. Con 3, third strike. And this time was Contagion Con 4, the four horsemen of the apocalypse. <laughs> Or of WW whatever. It was awesome. <laughs> it was amazing. It was. So, Contagion Con, we played so many great games. We did. It's just a three days of nights of gaming and campfires. Yeah. And we had eight guys. We rented a place out in Babson Park, Florida, which I did not know where it was until this past weekend. <laughs> you let the secret out of the bag. Uh, was, that place is amazing. It was cool. It was so much fun. So, um, I have to say... I want to start again because I brought the game that was obviously the favorite of the entire Contagion Con. Oh, interesting. Yep. And it's a game that everybody's been hyping. And I forget when it first came out, but Fantasy Flight published it. I feel like it's recent. And okay. it is the Star Wars, the deck builder game. Okay. So not Star Wars, the card game, or Star Wars, the board <laughs> game, one of the 50. Like, yeah, no. not Star Wars, Destiny, the dice. No, or the X-Wing battle. No, <laughs> none of that, right? This is just the new deck builder game. Okay. Very cool, very simple, small box, very cheap. Love it. Fantasy Flight did a great product. Obviously, they have the marketing for this, uh, the trademark. So it's like true deck builder. I mean, the name gives it away, but yeah. really it was like my favorite part of Tyrants. It is that good of a deck builder. It is. It's really good. And this thing, you know, throughout the weekend, like I said, we had eight guys there. So uh, there was a lot of times where there'd be a four player game going on. And a couple guys just want to get, get another game in. This thing was always on the table. It was always set up. There were always people playing it. There were people fighting over it. Um, there were people distracting each other to try to get people to go into the other room so they could just get on the table and play this thing. But what I love is it's all about conquering the planets of the other person. And you, it it's whoever gets to the three first wins, three planets, and they're the planets you know of, Andor, and you know, all those great things. Mm -hmm. um, Death Star is one. But essentially, one person plays as two players, one person plays as the Rebels, one person plays as the Empire. Mm -hmm. And I'm such a Star Wars geek, and I love your shirt. Rocking oh, out yeah. the Boba Fett, man. Got to. Woo! But, uh, so, this game is just terrific. And, um, you have have the force is on this card and so what you do is it starts on the rebel side and the force is with them and they're one with the force mm -hmm. and then there are cards where you can put the force back and forth and as you do that um you know certain cards abilities will be stronger or weaker so i love yep. that so that it, starts it's great it's a tug of war that just happens throughout the game and it's when do I do this? When, when, like, when's my time to make the force, to be one, one with the force, the force right. one with me? Right. And then um, you can always block your planets should you get cool things like these capital ships that mm -hmm. can kind of be the barricades. You've got things like Star Destroyer for the Empire. You've got Mom Calamari Cruiser, Rebel Transports, and then you have a ton of just characters and ships that are in neutral territory that mm -hmm. either of you can purchase, like blockade runners and such and bounty hunters. Yep. So that's like, super exciting, but I love the market because the market gets set up in the middle and you get all these characters and the fun thing about them, like he gets Director Krennic that comes out, but it points... Why do you gotta assume I'm Imperial? Well, because you're the bad guy. I'm always the good guy. <laughs> you're wearing Boba okay. Fett. He's wearing a Boba <laughs> Fett shirt. Am I right? Exactly. 
<laughs> if you had some Ewoks on, I would think differently about you. I love the Ewoks. Gotta love the Ewoks. So say you had Director Krennic as one of the six cards sticking out. Now you can purchase that for five buy power, but if I have five fight power, I can take it off the board instead and get abilities from it. So it's really cool. You can either target capital ships and planets, or you can spend some of your ability to take out some of the strongest characters in the deck. And so, to me, I thought I thought that was the coolest part of the game. Like that was something I've never seen before, and I just thought it was so amazing. It's it's a way to do something, get resources for something, and you're not bogging your deck down with junk. So like Darth Vader here, right? He's an eight, but then he's eight fight. So if I do that, I get all these abilities and keep him from getting this in his deck and cycling it through again and again. And then you've got like Jabba who's neutral. He can go either way. And it tells you here all these abilities. So he's really good with the force. Oh, yeah. Like Princess Leia and Boba Fett. You got... Cassian Andor, you've got Jawa scabbed. I mean, just Jeez, Malbus. There's 90 cards in there. X wings, so B cool. wings, you know, ATATs, Tie Fighter. Like, <sighs> this is everything I want it to be, and I can't wait because you know there's way more in the Star Wars universe that oh, they yeah. can bring in. But even if another expansion never came out, we could play this thing for hours and hours and hours. There's so much entertainment in this little box. Fantasy Flight, though, has to put out more cards. That would be I awesome. I mean, and that's what Fantasy it. Flight does, so do. I expect nothing less. They do. The Deck Builder Part 2. The Deck Builder Part 2 on steroids. <laughs> I want the big box of this. <laughs> I'm down for it. <laughs> so it plays very quickly, um, and I like that there are already ways that you can expand it. So if you want to take four planets... The other night, I got really adventurous and tried to take all 10 planets, and I was here for about an hour and a half and then decided to give up. Oh, my goodness. I mean, it's it's difficult. It's a little intense. It's a little intense. But you got to try to break a game, you know? That's yeah. the whole point of it. So now, what would you pair with Star Wars to drink? Because oh, what is man. a game without an imbibement? Something, something green, something red, some lightsabers. Blaster rifles. Well, guess what? No, that is. I is Elysian space dust. Of course. Wow. You got to do space dust if we're talking about Star Wars. Okay. I'm I'm a little concerned. Oh, I see what? IPA in the title, folks. This is not gonna be my favorite. <laughs> that, that just looks hot. I mean, the space guys dust is hot for a logo. <laughs> This place is great. I love it. And yes, unfortunately, it is 73 IBU. Ugh. Yeah, and obviously IBU, not obviously, but in case you didn't know, IBU, I poured you a nice little bit there, Dan. Yeah, this is like 72 IBUs too many. <laughs> well, typically IBUs, I think, go from about five up to, I only made a share of bottle, so you're welcome. Oh, I can smell it. <laughs> Cheers. That's dang. Ooh. Ooh. <clears throat> refreshing and bitterly delicious. Oh. <laughs> you okay there? So I'd be used typically on a good um, yeah, on a good pail going up to IPA, double IPA, right? Go from about five to maybe one twenty. But I think most are in that like ten to eighty range, they say. Oh. So seventy three okay. is higher towards that like almost acceptable level, right? Then you start going above, like like how I say about peat and smoke, like Ardbeg, it's like mm. off the scale. This is really high up on that, so, uh, you know, getting close. But it's also, I mean, let's be honest with me, okay? What do you think the percent is on this? But be honest. Does it taste like it's a... I can't taste anything <laughs> beyond <laughs> gross. Uh, <laughs> it it tastes, could be anywhere. Um, ten on the gross scale. No, it doesn't. It is delicious. If anybody... Everybody who likes IPAs knows of Space Dust, and it's phenomenal. Brown does a great product. Out of Seattle, it's amazing. But, um, yeah, I, I, I love it. I think it's, uh, oh, and, and I'm surprised because it is 8.2%. Oh, okay. It doesn't taste that high. I don't get all the sweetness that you normally get when you start hitting towards that no, 10, like the Belgian style. And... Uh, and I think part of it is the hops that are used, right? They have the popular Citra hops, which is all that tropical okay. flavor. They've got the Amarillo hops, which are also very popular for more for the aroma, mm -hmm. right? And also lots of citrusy flavors. And the Chinook, 
uh, hops as well adds a lot more of that pininess to it. So okay. you blend those together. You start talking about like different malts, different you know grains. Those are great hops. Uh, great hops combination. Okay, that's what I'm saying, and I'm sticking to it. I can contribute nothing to this conversation because I get none of that. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Wonderful pine mixing with the bitterness. Beautiful tropical fruits. They're abound. Uh, if you just sit there and savor it, mm, it feels like you're on a beach somewhere. And then you wake up and you realize you're in the darkness of space fighting a battle against a mortal enemy. Oh my goodness. <laughs> That's what I get. That's what I get. And I hope you agree. So... You should try it, the pairing, and let me know in the comments if that's what you feel as well. Or if you're over here with, you know, Mr. Humbug and the Empire saying that, you know, IPAs are terrible. <laughs> I'm not trying to be Mr. Humbug. I just can't help it. With <laughs> it's, I'm sure there's plenty of people out there that like it, and cheers to you guys. Um, there's stuff that I'm, I'm a huge fan of that I know that I'm in the minority of. Um, this I just can't do. <laughs> 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 All right, so fine. What did you bring, Dan? Because I know you can't stop the best game of Contagion Con and an exceptionally paired beer. So, you know, when you said best game of Contagion Con, I was right. I was kind of expecting a different game. <laughs> <laughs> Typical. All right, so uh, one of the things that we did was uh, since this was the fourth, our theme was the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse, uh, we played four. Uh, horse, we played games geared to each of the four horsemen. So we played a famine D and D campaign. We played a dun drinking dungeon crawl. Yep, all about famine. Then we had the skulls, which was such a fun game. Yeah, for we did death. Death. We played a, a custom game of skull, which was just rowdy and loud and everything you wanted it to be. For conquest, that was another great one. We did a royal rumble. Uh, we dressed up like 80s and 90s wrestlers and, and yelled at each other, and, and uh, it was amazing. Got a little raucous. But the best game... I knew where you were going with this. The best game had to be War that we played. We played War? No. You and me. You and me. Uh, for, That's a great game there, Dan. For War. For our War <laughs> Horsemen... Uh, we woke up pretty early, and everybody was kind of moping around, and somebody, this guy, uh, decided <laughs> to continue with the 80s and 90s wrestler theme and came out dressed like Sergeant Slaughter and had a loud whistle, woke everybody up, started calling them maggots and told them to line up and pull a card out of a deck. And what we did was we had a board set up. Yeah. I'm a little upset that you didn't bring Sergeant Slaughter outfit tonight. I know. <laughs> uh, Memoir 44. Ugh. Now, I know some of you are probably saying, oh, Memoir 44, how are you getting eight guys to do Memoir 44? There's something called the Overlord Edition for Memoir. Uh, it, it's insane. If you've got eight guys together, this is a cool uh, take on it. So in Memoir, let me grab some stuff. It was Unbelievably amazing. So, I mean, in memoir, you've got this, these, you know, the big board. Uh, their boards are two sided. You've got this big uh, grassy board. The other side has this beach board on it. And what you do is uh, you're going to take two sets of memoir 44. You need two core sets to do this. And you're going to lay them out. And in typical memoir, you've got a left flank, center, center front, and then the right flank. In Overlord Edition, each of those two sectors, each of those are broken into two sectors for the left flank, two for the center, and two for the right. You sit a person on each of those flank, front, center, and you have a general. The general runs the show. But there are lots of things that the general cannot do. It's kind of like in the real war where messages are relayed down, but that's about all you can do. It's up to each individual, you know, sergeant yep. and admiral to carry out all those actions for you. And they might do it in a way that is not acceptable. Exactly. You, 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 you can tell them to take the tanks and shoot <laughs> something, but they may not. Yeah, we've got tanks. We've got bunkers. We've got sandbags. I mean, this stuff's great. You've got dice that you're rolling all over the place. Oh, give me those dice. Hey. So this is this is a World War II game. <laughs> it, it's it it's see when you think World War II, at least for me, I think Axis and Allies. I think heavy strategic games. This one's tactical, 
and it's it's light in that there's dice rolling. It's quick. It's snappy turns. Um, but everybody just had a blast with this. I think probably out of the eight of us, I think maybe three or four of us have ever played this before. So there was a lot of new players with it. But it, it was just so fun. We had, you know... It's so easy. It is. It, it's so easy because, honestly, it, it the turns are like, you activate two cards, right? That yep. might be the card that I get for that whole round. It says, you activate two units. Mm -hmm. And so I'll have four units, and I just decide which two to activate, which means they can move or attack. Yep. And it's that simple. And that's why I love this so much, especially at four player, mm -hmm. because it takes a lot of the stress off. Because there are some of us when we game play that are more like, oh, I want to be an engine builder and I don't really like area control or these war games. Yep. And it doesn't feel like that as much because it's more about the camaraderie of the group and it's very limited to the stress pressure Exactly. Of moving because you're only moving two pieces. It's only so far you can go. And, and, it, and it's simple enough, but you're just excited to see your team exactly. work together. You're, you're, you're so focused on your little flank that that's all you have to worry about. You're not worried about this big board and some overarching strategy. You've got a commander behind you that's going to do that. And your commander can either win really well. And if, if you don't do the best job yourself, you can always blame it on your general. Exactly. And I mean, <laughs> let's be honest, we played this twice, didn't we? We did. We got two plays of it in. And you were the general one time. I was the general one time. And I was the general one time. This is correct. Interesting. Yes. We can, leave, we can stop there. No, I think we should tell them. Um, you know, when you were the general, did we win? We did not. And I was the general, did we win? Possibly. <laughs> <laughs> But it, it, was it wasn't cool. fair, because I still go back to saying that that one skirmish, that one scenario, was a little OP for, we, you know, the sides did, that we played. We so, did Omaha Beach, and it's very um, it, it's very hard for the Allies to do well in that scenario. I so. almost said the Imperials. <laughs> I like what we're doing right here with the Rebels, the Imperials, the, I mean... Definitely. It definitely works. But, um, you, you know, it, and it's, it's fun. We, we were blasting highway through the danger zone. The Allies are playing, and... You know, you can just have a lot of fun with this and, and, and take it easy. It's kind of it's kind of beer and pretzels level. I mean, it's it's not overly complex. You just have a good time with it. But one of the things that I, I really enjoyed with this is the pairing. So for Memoir, I brought out a bottle of Horse Soldier. This is special. So Horse Soldier is a whiskey out of... Columbus, Ohio. Columbus? I don't think whiskey when I think Columbus. I'm I thought sorry. it was Tampa. <laughs> they, they have a uh, urban still house in Tampa. Got it. Uh, but it's it's handmade and bottled by the American Freedom Distillery in Columbus, Ohio. And I'm wearing yeah. my Columbus brewery hat. Oh, it's so cool. I, it's so like, it's just <laughs> didn't even mean to do that. So uh, <laughs> this is named after Horse Soldier, and, and the story behind the Horse Soldier is uh, right after 9-11... The U.S. figured that they had to try to get some of these uh, Taliban and Al-Qaeda that were stationed in Afghanistan. So we sent in some Green Berets on horseback. We sent in 12 of them, and they were tasked with trying to hunt down Osama bin Laden and some of his uh, generals. 12 Strong. 12 Strong. Uh, it's a really cool movie. You guys check it out if you haven't. Um, it, it, it's excellent. But has Hemsworth, right? Yes, yeah, it does. Yeah. So th this horse soldier is, uh, I think some of the Green Berets actually made this distillery. And uh, there, there's a cool statue at Ground Zero for the horse soldiers as well. This is, I believe it's a weeded whiskey. Mm, and it's bourbon batch. whiskey. But it's, yeah, this is the signature small batch. So it's very cool. Very great stuff. This bottle was full when we did our, our memoir game. <laughs> and we have not opened it since. So... Um, there was Budweiser and Heineken yeah, yeah. on the other side, and well, that's the fun thing about memoirs, you know, you can, you put the hat on and all of a sudden, you know, you kind of start role playing a little bit, and it's, yeah. and it's fun. Oh yeah, and you've got somebody else on your flank that you're stationed with that you can just talk smack to the whole time, and uh, even if you don't know them very well, you, you will by the end of that. Private Thompson! <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Ooh, that so, was a terrible cling. Let's do that again. We can do it. It's crystal. Oh, there we go. Oh, there it was. Whew. Oh, that is so good. 
That's fantastic. So remind me, because I think there are different versions of this. Now, the I know this yeah, I know small batch, but um, signature, I think there was... Um... Yeah, this is the signature small batch. I think they do a level down from this. That might just be the... I forget what they call it. Yeah, I think there are about three levels, but this is such a tasty one. The signature is unbelievable, and it's totally worth the price. It's one of those that I went up and... I know that it's gone up in price because it's gone up in value mm -hmm. and it, truly they're doing wonderful things. So it's worth the price. Yeah. So that's my whole point. Find it and get it because oh, it is so tasty. Yeah. It's it, So the, the signature small batch, I think, is where it's at. There's the cask strength, uh, which which I tried when I was at the Urban Stillhouse there. And, oh. and to, to me, that one was just a little bit too hot. This is my speed. This is... 47 and a half percent, 95 proof. So it, it, it's great. They, they also just came out with, I think it's the Commander's Edition or something. It's like 650 bucks a bottle for that edition. We want it's it. It's a distillery exclusive. I want we're, it. We're never going to see it. I want it. Um, <laughs> I think this one's probably in that like 50-ish price range, but worth every penny. We, this, we've gone through a couple bottles of this already, and it's, so it's just, it's, it's fantastic. And it, it goes so well with... The story and drinking uh, bourbon when you're playing Memoir 44. I had this big, like, goblet when I was there. I felt like General Adama from Battlestar, just <laughs> watching my my people fight in the field and issuing orders to them. And, you know, I, I, I have the most obvious plan for them, and they don't execute for one reason or another. But <laughs> Well, I also like that there are cards that can turn the tide back and forth. And yeah. I know that you and I were playing a game recently, and... <clears throat> he got this card that allowed him to like trench in in all of his guys, all of his infantry. Oh yeah, were entrenched. And I'm going, oh my gosh, that is devastating. Yeah. Until I got a card that was like destroy trenches, or you know, like just you <laughs> yeah. know. So there are cards back and forth. And when we were playing, there was like counter attack, which comes oh, yeah. out. And so I know. So there was like an airstrike that happens. I remember when we were playing. The all the tanks advanced from Omaha Beach from mm -hmm. you know and I hate to say it but I used the counter attack which just they moved in it allowed me to attack on all of them yeah and pretty much wiped out three units of tanks oh yeah and that was just the beginning of the end immediately absolutely but it doesn't have to be that way but sometimes the cards can just be the the winning moment yeah just we, like it was in the real war and we, we, yeah and we, turning we, point moments we saw that at Contagion Con on the very first day. There's some card that was going to let us get behind. It was our card it was called behind enemy lines. We were going to get behind enemy lines and start taking some towns, getting some victory points. And I forget what card they played. They played the perfect card at the perfect time, and it gave them a chance to stop our behind enemy lines. And of course it did. And that that's why I lost. Oh, that's the reason. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I, I played the perfect card at the perfect time, but they they did. That's the only <laughs> reason. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, your outfit was amazing, and you were a great general. You just had <laughs> some crumb cards, and that's the way it goes. We had a blast. And, and, and you know, um, Memoir 44 constantly goes in and out of print. Um, just, just if you see it, it, like if this sounds like something that appeals to you, and the prices are astronomical right now because it's between print runs, just wait a little bit. It'll come back into print. But there's a ton of expansions for this thing. I mean, there's the new flight plan, which has planes flying in everywhere. There's the Pacific front, the Mediterranean front, the Eastern front. There's the equipment pack. There's the terrain pack. I mean, keep going. The list goes on and on and on and on. <laughs> there's so much cool stuff for this. And, uh, you know, it, it was one, I love memoir. I, it's really hard for me to get it to the table because it's two players. So when, when we... We decided it was going to be one of our games for Contagion Con. I was a little bit concerned about it because we haven't done the Overlook very much. And it was just a hit for everybody. So it, I think it surprised a lot of people that they could get a tactical World War II game that wasn't a brain burn, that was just fun for everyone. And now, because our game group has started to grow 8, 10 people, mm -hmm. it's great because we can definitely bring out both of these games, right? If definitely. 10 people show up, then we can have a game of... Memoir, mm -hmm. Overlord, and a game of the deck builder. <laughs> All right, hundred percent. Head to head. Where are we going with this? Where are we aligning these? Oh my god, my list. So this list is getting so big. I know, but Star Wars, the deck builder is so popular. It is a phenomenal deck builder, and this pairing. I mean, it couldn't. It can't be better. 
And the space dust. It's so tasty. I, I Tastiest like, beer you've had all year. Say it ain't so. It, it's not so. Oh. <laughs> Where is it going on the list? Uh, I, 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 love, I, I love that it is the space dust. I think that's super thematic. So I love that. And I think that probably the majority of people watching are going to enjoy it. Cool. So count me in the minority there. But I, I'm going to have to leave this to your call. Because I, I just don't, I don't appreciate that the way that I think most people do. Question is, last week we had two that fit right in at like 10 and 11 spot, right? Yep. So Carson City was great. Pandemic was great. I feel like now that we've got Contagion Con under our belts, mm -hmm. I love this game. I'm excited about it. So oh, yeah. I feel like it rises above Pandemic, even though that Buna is amazing. Okay. But do you think it also gets above Carson City? I, I can't answer that. I, I would say no just because I really don't like IPAs, right. but again, that's your call. Coming in at number 11. Okay. I We've can see that. got Star Wars The Deck Builder. The Deck Builder. Make sure because somebody at Contagion Con, when they were buying the game, had the card game in their, mm -hmm. <laughs> their basket, and I quickly said, no, 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 wait, 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 wait. Yeah. Yeah, and so. you know what was weird? The other so, so this is one of those games. So I, I don't know if this has ever happened to you guys, but you pull out a game for game night, and I think one of the best compliments that you can have on a game is people start buying that game like as they're playing it. They're like, whoa, what is this? So-and-so would love this. I want to buy this for so-and-so for Christmas. Yeah. Buy it. Do it. They'll love it. I think the majority of the people there uh, did that. Yeah. I, I know when I got home, there was a copy of this sitting on my doorstep. <laughs> <laughs> um, they, but uh, some, something else to Maybe consider. Maybe I need to bring it further up the list, Dan. <laughs> Scary. So that the uh, uh, one of the guys went on Amazon, I think, and tried to order it, and it was pairing this with Outer Rim for some reason. Oh, yeah. This sure. is not associated with Outer Rim. It's not. No, no. No. So do, if, if they're trying to do it, do you? Don't listen. And fantasy flights into a lot of things, so yep. probably will do that on occasion. So. Maybe. That'd be cool. Okay. Now, to your game. The Memoir Horse Soldier. Wow. This has to go high up for me. I had so much fun with Memoir, and I know I was joking about the best game at Contagion Con. We'll say that mine was the most played game. 100%. But the best game of Contagion Con was definitely... Definitely Memoir 44. So much so that I had to play it with you again. Like it's, you did. And, and I want to play it 40 more times. And <laughs> unfortunately, you have all the expansions and all the cool stuff. Oh, yeah. So, like, I'm busy with this forever. I, I, I don't want to buy it myself because you're no. already so deep into it. But yes. I cannot wait to play it again. I want to play it at 8 tonight. <laughs> I'd be down. And we are going to. Oh, are we? Yes! All right. So where does it lie? Where does it lie? Oh man! This I, I'm one. gonna I'm gonna put I'm gonna say minimum is behind tyrants or does it take down tyrants? That's kind of where I was looking to. I wasn't sure where it would go on there. But I mean, th that's the range. Was I was thinking it's top six? It's top six definitely. So I think it could go as high as top five. I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> it's the it's your choice. But I really like Horse Soldier. I really think. The Overlord especially, so much to it. Yeah, I mean, if, if, if that, that experience that we had, I mean, it was it was exceptional. We had guys wearing army hats. <laughs> I mean, every one of us was wearing some crazy hat or had a, a whistle or armbands That's or just like glasses. <laughs> All of it. I mean, it, it was great. If, if you have an experience like that, like, I, I it, it's hard to beat in gaming. That's one of those things that... We'll we'll probably be talking about five years from now. Is is remember that time in that in Babson Park when we all had hats on and we played Memoir Forty Four by this lake and we we're drinking Horse Soldier at ten a.m. Like I mean, that's that that's a cool experience. You don't have to tell me it was ten a.m. Oh, that was overshare. Five o'clock. We played at five. It was Overlord. Oh, all right. <laughs> so I, where does it go? Experience alone, like I I, I would put that oh, slightly above Tyrants. It comes in at number five, nah. Memoir 44, and that's super and horse difficult. Shoulder, because Tyrants is such a good game. Like, why know. is this decision so hard? And you destroyed my level up. I can't believe it. Oh. But I totally agree, a hundred percent. It's amazing. One day you and I are going to dispute some of these and say, "No, it is not." But we haven't gotten to that point yet. We're no, in total I, agreement. That that oh. one. I don't feel great about that. I, I feel like it's the right call, but it's so close. 
This is lovely. So, it is. Dan. Game hard. Drink responsibly. Thanks for watching, guys. Thank Cheers. You. Cheers. <laughs>